Good evening, Pepperdine. I love nights like this, when the Pepperdine family gets together to celebrate how far we've come as an institution, but to also look ahead into the future. The laughter, the fun, the hugs. I'm a hugger, and so tonight is a buffet. <laughs> this evening, every year, is one of the highlights of the year, and I'm glad that you're here. Before we proceed, though, I think I need to start with a confession. I didn't actually write the speech tonight. You guys have heard of this thing called Chet CPR or Chet TKO is something, but like they write speeches. So I said, well, I'll give it a shot. So good evening, Trojans. We're so glad you're here for the 2017 Affiliates Luncheon. Boo! I know, I know. The version four is out, but it's still working its bugs out. I hear, though, that they're working on another version that will actually have robots come and give speeches for you. So next year, we're going to have this done. We're going to have a robot give a speech for me. You won't even notice the difference. That was not an applause line. So joking aside, we are infinitely grateful and honored and humbled by the trust that every single one of you has placed in Pepperdine. And tonight, we celebrate you. Nights like this, when the room is filled with many of our most dedicated friends and supporters and faculty and staff and alumni, this reminds me why Pepperdine has such a unique platform in the world. Martin Luther King was known to have said, we are not makers of history, we are made by history. Let me say that again, we are not makers of history, we are made by history. Now we all know that Martin Luther King Jr. made a lot of history, but I take his point. In fact, that's our focus for this evening. The makers of history are not afraid to look back. In fact, makers of history feel a conviction to know and understand the history upon which they build. History and tradition shape us into a community of people who can make new history, history that inspires the next generation. For four years now, almost four years, we have cast an ambitious vision for continuing our ascent toward becoming the preeminent Christian university in the world. And we aim for nothing less than that. And we do so. Amen. We do so while staying true to the founding mission and principles that have so ably guided and inspired us this far. We have this ambitious vision because George Pepperdine and those who came after him taught us to dream, and they taught us to dream big. They built this institution on a foundation of first principles that have stood the test of time. As we together cast a vision for Pepperdine's future, we remain firmly rooted in those first principles while also continuing to climb. Tonight, we're going to wander through Pepperdine's historical roots, these first principles that have shaped us and made us the institution we are today. These are the roots that feed our growth as we climb. They ground our innovations and creativity so that we remain deeply tied to our original identity, an identity that distinguishes us from all other universities in the world. These first principles are faith and truth, and excellence, and character. These are almost sound, sounding like four cardinal virtues. In fact, as I've studied George Pepperdine over the years, I'm astounded that his vision and these virtues are remarkably profound 
as a cure for the ills of modern culture, now some 90 years later. Faith, where there is fear. Truth, where there is deception. Excellence, where there is apathy. And character, where there is self-promotion. I want to look back tonight with you at these roots of George Pepperdine's vision and also look ahead as they strengthen our ever bolder future vision. First, let's start with faith. When speaking of his twofold vision for Pepperdine, our founder expressed both dedication to a world-class academic training in the liberal arts and what he deemed to be a greater goal of building in students a Christ-like life, a love for the church, and a passion for the souls of mankind. His greater goal, as he called it, of investing in spiritual lives of our students was not secondary to any other higher objective. George Pepperdine was unapologetic about his highest purpose for establishing, establishing this institution. In fact, his dedicatory address begins with these iconic words. What we say here today in this dedication of these buildings is of little significance. But the work which will be done through the days and the years and the generations to come will be of very great importance if that work is guided by the hand of God. I like this quote so much that I had it plastered on an entire wall in the president's office. George Pepperdine didn't water down Pepperdine's faith focus core identity, and neither will we. And yet it remains our conviction that part of our core identity includes welcoming all students, no matter where they are in their faith, to a Christian university where they can encounter the life and love offered by Jesus Christ. Our job, and according to George Pepperdine, our first mandate is to create and sustain a culture where each of our students experiences the presence and power of God while at Pepperdine. So what does this look like? How is our first mandate being manifested at Pepperdine right now? And what does the future hold for Pepperdine's commitment to our faith? Let me talk about a few examples. Our students are flocking to the well. Our weekly worship experience in the middle of campus in our amphitheater. One of our highest priorities is to create a worship culture across our campuses. And this flagship worship experience has become a great source of joy and meaningful fellowship for our students. Likewise, our student athletes worship together every Wednesday night in the Athletes' Chapel, where many of our athletes are growing stronger in their faith in praising God through victory and in the rare occasions where there's defeat. <laughs> the Pepperdine Worship Summit, now in its fourth year, is the annual kickoff event that proclaims to our community and to all of Southern California who we are at Pepperdine, a community powered by vibrant worship. And last year, just before this associate's dinner, we launched a new Center for Faith and the Common Good. This center is focused on demonstrating through evidence-based research and scholarship that a life of faith leads to individual human flourishing and to societal good. Earlier this month, the center received a leadership gift from one of our beloved members of our university board, Will Bill and Stephanie Beasley please stand to be recognized? Thank you, Beasleys, for your investment in connecting faith to truth. So let's turn to truth, our second virtue. This is possibly the most debated concept in this world today and perhaps over the course of human history as well. At Pepperdine, we define our academic process as the pursuit of truth. 
In fact, in our Pepperine affirmations, as you probably all have memorized by heart, we declare that truth, having nothing to fear from investigation, should be pursued relentlessly in every discipline. As we all know, pursuing truth is not the same as simply watching our favorite echo chamber cable news channel. And with the rise of social media, the rise of social media, the truth is often hidden deep beneath the noise. George Washington once said, truth will ultimately prevail where there is pains to bring it to light. He wasn't the best grammarian, where there is pains to bring it to life. I guess you don't actually have to be a grammarian to be president of the United States. You just need a little strategery. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, though. You get what George is saying. True education brings truth to light. True education celebrates critical thinking and different views. True education allows others to speak even when we don't agree with them. And true education challenges and supports students. It does not coddle them, and it does not infantilize them. And that's who we are at Pepperdine. It is precisely this rigorous civil dialogue where weak arguments and sloppy thinkings is exposed. As I've traveled the globe and immersed myself in different cultures, I've learned that we can share values and principles and still see things differently, approach things differently, experience things differently. The more I learn about other people and other cultures, the more I learn about myself and our culture. And in doing so, I find I have a genuine conviction to adopt what is good, indeed what is better, from other cultures. In Uganda, for example, in a business meeting, it's 90% social and 10% business, and the business always comes at the end. Tea is served, and I don't like tea. <laughs> cookies are served. I like cookies. <laughs> Laughter is exuberant, and anyone who knows me knows that I love to laugh. In Uganda, they say, you in the West have all the watches. We in Uganda have all the time. <laughs> I think to myself, but there's work to be done here. And yet, upon deeper look, we learn that business happens better and faster when trust is high. And trust is built on relationships, and relationships are built over time through the sharing of stories and through the sharing of cookies. So perhaps the Ugandan culture knows something we can learn from. A deep principle, a core truth, a simple nature, a simple truth about human nature. Likewise, academic freedom and free speech are absolutely essential in the pursuit of truth. At Pepperdine, we know our true north. And our true north doesn't need defenders. Truth stands on its own merits. We invite questions and scholarship and research and debate and dialogue. That's what a true university does. So we will engage with all beliefs, all faiths, all people in good faith and in pursuit of truth. And in that process, we will listen to those views with which we vehemently disagree, and we will be better and sharper for it. At Pepperdine, we know our true north. George Pepperdine was absolutely clear that our faith in our Lord is our true north. He said, America and the world needs Christianity. Yes, they need Christianity knowledge and culture and education, but they need Christ even more. An educated person without religion is like a, a ship without a rudder or an automobile without a steering gear. So what does the future hold for Pepperdine's commitment to truth? 
This year, we started a new experience on campus that we're calling Dialogue Dinners. We invited 32 faculty from around the university to dinner at my house on four occasions to discuss and debate some of the most difficult and challenging and controversial issues of our day. The idea is to rub shoulders with other thought leaders who hold different views and ideas and listen and learn from each other to pursue truth together. One faculty member in his, his uh, survey response said, the dialogue dinners, in my view, have been the most important Pepperdine opportunity provided to its faculty for the last 15 years in the university. Needless to say, this series will continue to grow among the faculty, but will also expand to include staff and students. Two years ago, I began the President's Speaker Series with a focus on the areas of civil discourse and free speech and other important topics necessary to counter the trends of cancel culture. We've hosted Robbie George and Cornell West and Jonathan Haidt, and just last week, John Clifton, the CEO of Gallup, who spoke about the global rise of unhappiness and what we can do to engender excellence in all aspects of our lives, which brings me to my third virtue of excellence. Steve Jobs once said, be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. But that's precisely who we are at Pepperdine. That's what we're pursuing, an environment where excellence is expected. Why? Well, because that's what God expects of us. Philippians 4.8, a familiar text to most of you, is becoming a banner verse for us. Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We define excellence at Pepperdine as giving God our very best, the first fruits of our lives. Even before a single student stepped onto Pepperdine's campus, George Pepperdine cast a vision for excellence, saying, Young men and women in this institution will be given educational privileges equal to the best in higher education. Today, we are a top-tier academic institution and the highest-ranked Protestant university in the country. Well, why is excellence important? Why did George Pepperdine consider excellence to be important? The pursuit of excellence for the sake of notoriety or self-promotion is a vain and vacuous enterprise. The reason we at Pepperdine pursue excellence is to serve others and to glorify God. To serve others and to glorify God, period. That gives deep purpose to the sacrifice necessary to achieve excellence. We expect our students, of course, to be excellent when they arrive. We are very difficult to get into Pepperdine. But even more, we expect them to be more excellent when they leave. Excellent in heart and in soul and in mind and in strength. They need to be excellent in order to be extraordinary leaders who, are, who will shape the world in whatever calling they receive when they leave Pepperdine. We are moved by excellence. And excellence equals influence. And influence changes the world. That's the Pe Pepperdine promise to our students. To show them excellence and to equip them for excellence. So how is excellence manifested at Pepperdine? We have assembled an excellent faculty in each of our schools that rival the most prestigious universities in the world. We are about to break ground on the mountain at Mullen Park, our world-class student village with a state-of-the-art fitness center, a 3,500-seat arena with restaurants and terraces, and a stunning view that creates an ambiance for community and connection. In fact, as you've heard before, the namesake of the mountain at Mullen Park 
is sitting there next to the First Lady. Sharon, can we recognize you one more time? Sharon, we are so thankful for you and Terry and for the vision you've had for Pepperdine. And we're going to live into that vision in a way that will make you and Terry completely proud. We're also about to open, and when I say about to open, July 6th. Got it on my calendar. You all should come! <laughs> the Chateau d'Hauteville, near Lake Geneva in Switzerland, is a new university campus. Words do not do this justice to the grandeur of the property and to the global convening power that it offers. 67 acres built in 1760, owned by one family the entire time. The lightning rods on the roof were made by and given to them by Ben Franklin. I'm not making this up. The Switzerland campus is spectacular, almost as spectacular is the cheese and the chocolate that are in Switzerland. You can actually buy wheels of cheese in a vending machine. I'm not making that up. What a country. And at Pepperdine, we cannot speak of excellence without mentioning our athletics and our arts. Last year, for the fourth time, last year, for the fourth time in Pepperdine's history, we won the Director's Cup for Division I AAA, which is awarded annually to the top Division I athletic program in the country that doesn't play football. And there's over a hundred of those. <laughs> I know, I know, we need a football team. We gotta find places where Dale and Rita can go on dates. <laughs> more than half of our teams, listen to this carefully, more than half of our teams spend a significant portion of the year in the top 25 in Division I. There's maybe a handful of schools can say that. Our women's soccer in the fall rose to number nine. Our men's golf currently in season is ranked number seven. Our women's golf currently in season, who won the West Coast Conference Championship today, <laughs> currently ranked number 17. Our men's water polo, who played in the fall, rose to number nine. Women's volleyball beat three top 15 teams and was number 17. Men's volleyball, currently number nine. I see the coach right here. Our women's tennis team, still in season, ranked number eight in the country with the number one doubles team in the country. Men's tennis, currently number 30, but number 20 earlier in the season. And women's beach volleyball, currently number 19 spectacular excellence in all that we do, including athletics. On the art side of the ledger, our Parkinson Classical Guitar Program continues to be ranked number one in the country. <laughs> Brittany Weinstock and Luke Oldroyd were crowned national champions at the National Opera Association competition this year. Across the schools and academic programs and extracurricular activities, our students are growing in their purpose, and as they do, they are demonstrating the highest level of character, which brings me to the fourth virtue, character. Again, quoting George Pepperdine, here, we're here at age to age looking back and seeing how what he has said is being lived out here. He says, I am endowing this institution to help young men and women prepare themselves for lives of usefulness in this competitive world and to help them build a foundation of Christian character and faith which will survive the storms of life. College is an indispensable opportunity to build character. It's full of challenges and adversity. Finding friends, finding the right friends. Finding your identity, discovering your true identity, a child of God made in his image. Dealing with drama. In my house, we have a no drama rule. Unfortunately, I don't get to make the rules for the dorms. Being confronted 
with the rigorous intellectual expectations, experiencing rejection socially, emotionally, and academically, having your values challenged and your faith, faith questioned, deciding what you believe and what you will stand for, finding your calling and your career, and it's true of many of you out there, finding your soulmate. These are serious opportunities that hit all at once in college. And as you know well, where you send your kids and your grandkids to college matters tremendously. Here at Pepperdine, we believe all of these challenges are opportunities for growth and formation with wise and patient counselors by our student side. We were not designed to take these questions and tackle them alone. We were built to live in community. George Pepperdine has charged us to build a community of faculty and staff comprising people of impeccable character. Our students are counting on it. It's our promise to students and to their parents that they're going to find a campus filled with caring and thoughtful mentors with whom they can have personal relationships and receive individual attention amidst the challenges they're facing. The storms of life are inevitable and outside of our control, but the formation of character is neither inevitable nor outside of our control. It can and it must be an intentional undertaking at Pepperdine. Our promise of a transformative Christian education is founded upon the promise of interpersonal, life-on-life -life relationships with professors, professors with tried and tested character and passion, walking with students through the hyperformative time of emerging adulthood. Pepperdine is generating leaders, brilliant leaders of faith and character and courage and creativity. Our children are worth it. Our communities are worth it. This nation is worth it. Our world is worth building character. And we remain committed to it at Pepperdine. I remember my mentors here at Pepperdine, those who helped me grow and mature and see the world through a bigger lens to overcome rejection and to weather the storms of life. I think of Ron Phillips. I think of Janet Kerr. And I think of my dearly departed friend, Ken Starr. The most memorable and rewarding part of my own teaching career at Pepperdine Crusoe School of Law for 20 years was mentoring young professionals dealing with real life issues. So how are we doing? How are we doing at this? I guess the proof is in the pudding, as they say, not to use too many sugar things as metaphors. It seems like hardly a week passes without an employer telling me how they love hiring Pepperdine students because of their work ethic and their character. George Pepperdine closed his dedicatory address by encouraging the Pepperdine community to dedicate ourselves anew to the great cause of beautiful Christian living. He said, in this way, we do our small bit to glorify the name of God in the earth and to extend his kingdom among the children of men. As I close, let me remind you of something that you already know. Pepperdine is a light. Our students, each and every one of them, is a light to the world. A light of faith, of truth, of excellence and character. All of this because of God's grace and faithfulness and because of the vision and fortitude of his servant, George Pepperdine. May God continue to shine his grace and favor upon Pepperdine. God bless you. Thank you.